C.J. Stroud all the way down at 20 to the Philadelphia Eagles. I, what are, I, I guess Jalen Hurts is done. Woo, let's get it, let's get it, let's get it. Y'all know who it is. It's your boy Ray G here for the Draft Network. And this is my favorite show because I just get to sit back and mock the mock. Yes, we had a brand new 2023 NFL mock draft hit them streets this past Monday. This time, we got it from my man, my dog, Keith Sanchez, a.k.a. The Talent Code on Twitter. He's got two running backs in round one. He's got a quarterback in free fall, and he's got America's team. That's right, America's team getting a big upgrade on the offensive side of the ball. we got a lot to talk about, and if these landing spots and draft capital were to play out, how would we react in fantasy football so i'm excited i'm glad you tapped in strapped in let's talk it out key sanchez 2023 nfl mock draft v1 draft network let's get it and let's start this mock the mock talking about the first skill position player off the board for keith the chicago bears picking number three overall they don't go o-line they don't go d-line they don't go secondary they give justin fields the proper help that he needs and deserves and they go get Jackson Smith and Jigba, wide receiver from the Ohio State. Now, listen, J- JSN and Justin Fields never technically played together, but everybody likes to make the Ohio State link in comparison, right? If he can throw to his old college teammate, they were there together, but he really wasn't throwing to JSN. There's no doubt in my mind that JSN is going to absolutely smash college football this season he's going to put up ridiculous stats ridiculous numbers and he's probably going to be drafted top 10 in the nfl draft i think this would be a great addition for chicago a great upgrade for justin fields who right now is throwing to nobody outside of darnell mooney they need another guy that can go get it is jsn that guy I don't know. Me, personally, I think Kayshawn Boutte is a tick better than Jackson Smith and Jigba, a little more of a complete wide receiver, in my opinion, but I'm no scout here. But JSN, the number three to Chicago, would surely place him in the position to be a top five pick, whether it's single quarterback, absolutely going top five. Super flex, a lot of people would bite into that, gravitate towards that connection, and JSN would probably be drafted really, really high in rookie drafts. Uh, JSN, incredible talent. I just I want to see some of the testing numbers, right? There's some questions about the long speed, some questions about his ability to win consistently on the outside, but there's no doubt if Chicago picks him at three overall, he's going to have every damn opportunity available to him to be the guy. And with Justin Fields there needing another weapon outside of Darnell Mooney and Cole Komet, this would be very good for fantasy purposes. Now, at number five overall, the New York Giants. They get their quarterback of the future, not named C.J. Stroud, not named Will Levis. They go with, in my opinion, the most complete quarterback prospect in this class right now, Bryce Young. And I know he's got his limitations, the size, all of that good stuff. But you put Bryce Young behind this offensive line that seems to be trying to get better, right? Evan Neal at tackle, Brian Dayball at the helm. You get Bryce Young back there throwing to Wondell Robinson, throwing to Kadarius Toney. Probably throwing to another new receiver that's not on the roster, not named Kenny Galladay. Uh, Saquon Barkley, I mean, I don't hate it, right? I don't I don't hate the landing spot for Bryce Young, but it doesn't get me as excited as thinking about Will Levis in New York or Anthony Richardson that was in DP's mock to the Giants because of that dual threat skill set that we're looking for fantasy. I think it'd be an excellent fit from an NFL perspective, fantasy-wise, I don't know. I still think some of these other quarterback landing spots would lend for that those quarterbacks to be drafted ahead of Bryce Young. But thinking about Bryce Young in the Big Apple could be really good for Giants fans, and I know they would love to have an upgrade over Daniel Nichols right now. Now, my personal wide receiver one in this draft class, LSU's wide out Kayshawn Boutte. We heard Miles Brennan stepping away from the program. I guess it's going to be Jaden Daniels throwing him the ball. That's my biggest concern with Boutte and his production this season. But if he lands in Jacksonville, I don't care how much money they pay Christian Kirk, Boutte is better. LaVisca Chenault, failed experiment. Uh, Zay Jones, nice complimentary piece. But Kayshawn Boutte, he's that dude. He should assert himself as that guy instantly, immediately for Jacksonville. Love the fit of Kayshawn Boutte in Jacksonville. And I think we've kind of seen that consistently throughout our scouts, pegging a wide receiver with the Jacksonville Jaguars, giving Trevor Lawrence an, a, a proper outside wide receiver. Love, love, love Kayshawn Boutte in Jacksonville. Now let's get, let's get funky right here because I love this pick from Keith. 
given the Detroit Lions, their quarterback of the future behind what's looking like one of the better offensive lines in the NFL. This thing is getting better and better. Panay Sewell getting better. But go ahead and pencil in Will Levis to the Detroit Lions. Oh, my goodness. That offensive line, his skill set, Jamison Williams, Amon Ross St. Brown, uh, DeAndre Swift, TJ Hawkinson. Hell, bring DJ Chark back when you got a quarterback like Will Levis that can just throw the ball down the field. I would love it, love it, love it. Will Levis in Detroit for fantasy purposes. Uh, based on what we've seen so far, we're only seven picks in, right? We're only at we're only at the second quarterback off of the board, but sign me up for Will Levis as QB1. Right now, we'll see how the rest of this mock plays out. But Detroit, Will Levis, Kentucky, love it. Smash spot. We should be real excited for fantasy football purposes if this were to happen. Now, you go down a couple of picks through this mock, and the commanders, they get their quarterback of the future, probably the guy that has the most tantalizing skill set of all these quarterbacks, Anthony Richardson, quarterback out of Florida. Washington Commanders select him top 10. You know, l- listen, Jahan Dotson, you've got a couple of running backs, Brian Robinson, J.D. McKissick, Antonio Gibson is on punt coverage. So you get Anthony Richardson in there with Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson. I like it, right? I like it. Is Ron Rivera going to last after this season? I don't know what they're going to do. If Rivera's gone, even more of an incentive for the commanders to go out to find their quarterback of the future. And the last time they had a dual threat quarterback, uh, Robert Griffin III, it worked out very well until he got injured. So I would love Anthony Richardson in Washington. It was a spot that we potentially thought we could see one of the 2022 quarterbacks fall to. They opted for Yolo Wentz. And we all know how that's going to work out at the end of the season. We don't need a crystal ball to see how that's going to play out. Probably not good. Love Anthony Anthony Richardson to the Washington Commanders. Now, here we go. Boom! This is the highest I've seen him in a mock yet. But the Texas stud running back B. John Robinson to the Philadelphia Eagles here at number 13. Trade via the New Orleans Saints. Listen, the Eagles, they, 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 they're trying to figure it out. Miles Sanders... Probably not getting re-signed. Boston Scott, you can't use him as a full-time back. And I love Kenneth Gainwell, but you probably don't want to give him 15 to 20 touches per game. But you can do that with B. John Robinson. And as a Cowboys fan, I, I'm already having nightmares of uh, N'Kobe Dean and Jordan Davis. I don't want to deal with B. John Robinson twice a year. Don't like it at all, but my goodness, if the Philadelphia Eagles commit to Jalen Hurts and they add B. John Robinson to an offense that already has A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard, uh, just cancel Christmas. This is going to be the team that I play with on Madden. I love it, Keith. I just do not like the fact that you gave the Philadelphia Eagles B. John Robinson, but if this happened for fantasy purposes... uh, 101 right up there, right? Super flex, single quarterback, doesn't matter. Love B. John Robinson to Philadelphia. Now, the Tennessee Titans, they add a wide receiver to their room with Alabama, hopefully stand out, Jermaine Burton. Big fan of Jermaine Burton at Georgia. Everything that we're hearing from Alabama, from Nick Saban, out of Tuscaloosa, is Jermaine Burton is the guy. He's the most consistent receiver that they have right now during fall camp. Tennessee. Robert Woods, very, very capable wide receiver, but he is on the on the back nine of his career, not the front nine. Traylon Burks, we like him, the potential that he can bring, but they still need another guy. So adding Jermaine Burton to the mix would be fantastic for the Titans. Maybe Malik Willis. They didn't take a quarterback. They can be done with Ryan Tannehill. Get Malik some more weapons, right? Potentially, maybe, maybe. Like Jermaine Burton in Tennessee, 14 overall. Feels a little high, but you know what? Death taxes and an Alabama wide receiver getting drafted early. We keep seeing it year after year. Jermaine Burton, a very good bet to be a first-round pick and probably a top 15 pick in the 2023 NFL draft. Now, as we scroll down a little bit more, we got another wide receiver coming off of the board, Jordan Addison to the Indianapolis Colts. They're just going to pair Michael Pittman Jr. and Jordan Addison, the USC to USC connection. Is it going to be Matt Ryan? Do they have somebody else in mind? Are they going to draft somebody in 2023? Addison to the Colts, I would like it, but for fantasy purposes, I still think he's the number two behind uh, Michael Pittman, and they're both number two behind Jonathan Taylor. So uh, I like the fit. It makes sense from a football standpoint. Fantasy, I don't know where I would have Addison at. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I would say based on this mock, he would probably clearly be my fourth wide receiver option that I would invest in. 
Uh, I, I think Michael Pittman Jr. is the one in there, and they do need a viable two. You can't throw Ashton Doolin out there. I get the Paris Campbell experience. We're trying. We're trying. It's I just don't have high hopes on that one. So they need another number two. Jordan Addison makes a ton of sense. Fantasy, I still need to wait and see. Now, here we go. Bombshell, big one. Normally, we see this player top five, top six, top two, top one. C.J. Stroud, all the way down at 20 to the Philadelphia Eagles. I, what are, I, I guess Jalen Hurts is done. He's done. If this happens, you will know, right? We'll know after this season is Jalen Hurts, is he going to be the quarterback of the future? C.J. Stroud to Philadelphia at 20. I'll just say this, man. If this is how the NFL draft were to play out, I don't know how good I'd feel about this, right? If C.J. Stroud, who is currently being universally viewed as the number one quarterback in this class, not by me and obviously not by Keith, I just don't know. Him falling to 20 to Philly, still going to be a first-round pick in super flex formats, but I'm easily taking Anthony Richardson, Will Levis, and probably Bryce Young over C.J. Stroud. Now, the positive about this landing spot is, we just talked about it, right? B. John Robinson, Dallas Goddard, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith. So maybe he doesn't have to do a ton there. Just get the ball out accurately to those playmakers and let them do their thing. But C.J. Stroud to Philadelphia, very interesting. This is the furthest we've seen him fall. And like we talked about before a couple of episodes ago, you know, we look at this NFL quarterback class right now, and we just assume those are the top two, Young and Stroud. But we know going back to 2009, it doesn't always play out that way. C.J. Stroud to Philadelphia, would be moved down my super flex boards just a tad bit. I would not select him with the top three pick if he did fall to 20 to the Eagles with three quarterbacks being drafted ahead of him. Now, my Dallas Cowboys, I love the pick. TCU, damn it, I just can't quit those helmets. I cannot quit TCU wide receivers. I'm back in. Quentin Johnston, Dallas Cowboys, opposite C.D. Lamb, Dak Prescott, sign me up. I want it. I want it. I want it. I love it. Good offense. Good quarterback. You've got a competent, uh, an ascending number one opposite of you to take the pressure away. Michael Gallup, still got to see how he's going to recover from his injury. Jalen Tolbert, like him. I uh, will see. I hope he can be that guy as the number two. But if Dallas takes Quentin Johnston in the first round, that tells you that they don't have a lot of confidence in uh, Jalen Tolbert or Michael Gallup being that number two opposite C.D. Lamb. This is another weapon for Dak, another weapon for Dallas. Would absolutely freaking love it if the Cowboys stayed at home and got TCU wide receiver Quentin Johnston. Now the second running back off the board. Let's get it, baby. Jameer Gibbs to the Miami Dolphins. Sign me up. I want him. Right after B. John Robinson, give me all the Jameer Gibbs I can handle. This is this is my guy. I, I think his skill set is exactly what you want in fantasy football. The explosiveness, the ability to catch the ball in the backfield. He gives you a little bit of versatility with special teams. The explosiveness. I venture to say Alabama hasn't had a running back like this in I don't know how long. Maybe through Nick Saban's entire entire career, right? I know Kamara was there. You know, we kind of looked at Josh Jacobs as his dual threat guy, Kenyon Drake. He hadn't had a Jameer Gibbs. Derrick Henry, great. Best running back I've seen come through Bama since Sean Alexander. But Jameer Gibbs offers a skill set that I think is going to open up this offense in ways that Nick Saban never thought possible. Bryce Young, Jameer Gibbs, Jermaine Burton, Tyler Harrell, Cam Latu. This would be awesome. Awesome landing spot for Jameer Gibbs with that new Mike McDaniels offense. Uh, get out of the way, Chase Edmonds. I'm not worried about Sony Michelle and Raheem Mostert move around. Jameer Gibbs would be a smash spot, smash pick, single quarterback, super flex. I want me some Jameer Gibbs. Love the landing spot that Keith placed on that young running back. Now let's finish it out with a tight end. Michael Mayer, big tight end out of Notre Dame, going number 30 overall to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We know Rob Gronkowski retired. Tom Brady is apparently on vacation during the middle of training camp because – that's what goats do. They can just take vacation in the middle of training camp, right? When you're the goat, you do goat shit. That is goat shit that Tom Brady is doing. If he's there, they do need another another tight end, right? I'm not buying Cade Otten. I know they brought in Kyle Rudolph, and they've got Cameron Braid or whomever there. Get you a proper one. Get you a proper tight end one. Michael Mayer, I think this is the furthest we've seen him slide. But based on what we know today, Tom Brady is never going to retire. He's going to play until he's 50. Michael Mayer, if he even got one season with Tom Brady, 
I believe he could make Michael Mayer a probably top five, top eight tight end right off the back because that's what Tom Brady does in that offense. His skill set would love the fit of Michael Mayer to Tampa Bay. So overall, really, really interesting mock. I love some of the landing spots that Keith gave us in his V1 of this 2023 NFL mock draft. And for fantasy purposes, there are a lot of good things that would come out of some of these landing spots, in particular the quarterbacks, the running backs, and I liked a couple of those wide receiver landing spots as well. If you want to read and enjoy, as you should, the entire mock, make sure you go to the Draft Network or just look in the description below as you hit the thumbs up button and leave a comment for the algorithm click that link so you can check out everything that we're doing over there all of our content creators make sure you tap into all of that for the draft network for your boy ray g until next week mock the mock stay cool stay straight we'll be back next week i'm out peace